Praise God. It's good to be back with you, finally, to be back with you on uh, uh, the next one on part seven on faith, a place of victory. Uh, my text is 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, we established the fact that we do have faith. And the Bible says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I'm going to read uh, James chapter 2, verse 17 again. We talked about that last time. It says, even so faith, if it had not works, is dead, been alone. The New Living Translation says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. And then, of course, the Message Bible says, isn't it obvious that God talkers without God acts is outrageous nonsense? You know, a lot of times people, they say they have faith, but they, by the way they act, you can't tell it they have faith. Well, matter of fact, with that being said, I want to read you a word of inspiration that I've written a while back, and it's called, uh, Faith is Not Confused. You know, faith is, 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 uh, is not confused. The Bible says, through faith we understand the world we're framed by the Word of God through faith. But I've written this a while back. This is called, Faith is Not Confused. As a child of God, don't live your life in a state of confusion. Everything that is not of faith is nothing but an illusion. When things look hopeless because you don't see a transformation, stay steady in faith and remember that you have inside information. Faith looks beyond the hopelessness and refuses to doubt and waver. It does not rely on the arm of the flesh or hint to others to receive favor. Faith does not have to tell others about your need, hoping they will respond It is steady, solid, and stable, and believes only the Word, and is peaceful and calm. When you walk in faith, it's a sign that your heart is fixed, established, and at rest. No matter what comes your way, you're not filled with anxiety or full of stress. Faith is not confused in the midst of opposition because it sees the end results. It increases through the knowledge of the word and are not moved by insults. Where the spirit of faith is, there is freedom without fear of confusion. Faith will always bring joy and peace to you through a Holy Ghost transfusion. If you rely on your own understanding, then things will always be unclear. But with a spirit of faith in your heart, then things will supernaturally and spiritually appear. God is not the author of confusion, and faith is never confused. It was given to you by God so that you can be developed and used. Hosea 4, 6 says that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They cannot comprehend how to give God special honor, respect, and homage. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, for his life is set on a course. Through his lack of knowledge, he has not developed his faith in life to reinforce. Surely the scriptures, so uh, study the scriptures so you can be single-minded and unwavering to stay on track. Then you'll be strong in faith and not be full of confusion and spiritual lack. I thought I'd read that to you because faith is not confused. So when you start walking in the spirit of faith, Like I said, it's a different language, and people, they think that you are confused. No, you know what you're doing. They're confused because they hadn't been taught right. God said, my people are destroyed because of the lack of faith. So faith is a place of victory. And the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. And you can win every situation. You know, uh, faith is a place of victory. I got to thinking about the words faith, F-A-I-T-H. F, the first letter of faith, faith is, uh, it has fortitude, it means strength. A, it has authority, faith has authority. The next letter, I, it has integrity. 
The next letter, T, it has tenacity. That means it's very firm. And H, it has hope. So the Bible teaches us there in Deuteronomy 28, it says that if thou would observe to do all these things, and it tells us about all these blessings. But I'm going to read it in Matthew 28, verse 18. It says, and, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe. The word observe means to teach them to perceive, discern, detect, and to discover all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. You know, place, faith is a place of victory. And when you get full of the word of God, God will speak to you through his word. He'll bring scriptures up uh, to you to remind you of, of a certain direction. It's amazing what God will do. I mean, many, many, I say many years ago, it had been a few years ago, that when I was a machinist. And uh, when I was a machinist, I, uh, one particular night, we got off at 11 o'clock. And our sound, it was a big, long whistle. That means it's like, okay, it's time to go home. And I lived about, um, about 17, 18 miles from uh, the place where I worked. So it was at night time, and, but about 15 minutes till, about 15 minutes to 11, I, I, I began to thank God we got an inward God that lives inside of us. I, I began to feel some, something, something didn't feel right. It's about 15 till, I began to feel unsettled. I, I don't know what's going on. I felt like uh, there was danger ahead of me. And, and uh, Faith is a place of victory, so uh, to, to me, this is a testimony of victory. Because it was about 10 till, about 5 till, I kept saying, God, what is it? What is it? And usually I'm cutting up because it's time to go home. We're cutting up with the guy, but now I'm kind of quiet this time. And the whistle blew, and that was time to go home, so I went to the restroom, wash my hands, and I'm, I'm kind of quiet, and I get to my car. Is it night time? And, and I got in the car, and and I sat there for, before I took off. I said, the Lord, I said, I don't know what, what's going on. But Lord, you said in your word, you said in your word, whatever, whatever's ahead of me, you said that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Notice I didn't pray, God, be with me. Huh. No, I've already got that in Revelation. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I said, Lord, uh, whatever it is, I, I'm, I'm trusting you that I'll make it home. And after I prayed that, I felt a release. So therefore, I uh, got the car running and, and I took off. Well, I had to go through the town of Sapapa, Oklahoma, to go towards Kellerville, where, where we lived. So uh, I got in, I came in on the Sapapa, and I came to the traffic signal. And I made a right. When I made a right, there's a lot of traffic just stopped. And these lights are flashing, and the ambulance was there, so they had an accident. Now, I forgot about me praying what I prayed. I forgot all about it. I had peace, forgot all about it. And, and so uh, I'm at the uh, traffic signal. I'm the next one to go through. And they noticed someone else uh, in the ambulance or whatever. I just kind of waited. And now I tell you what. When I drove, uh, when the, the, the policeman offered me, just said, come on. When I went through, the minute, the minute I came, went through the intersection, the minute I heard this voice, to me, it sounded like it was somebody in my car, physically, somebody in the back seat, and I heard these words, and it said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It was God speaking to me supernaturally to remind me See, that's why I always say I'm at the right place at the right time. To me, my faith was simply trusting God for protection. 
Faith is a place of victory. And that night at 11 o'clock or 11.15 or whatever that time was when I went to that intersection, that was a victory. That could have been me being loaded up in that ambulance. But it wasn't for me because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. It's a place of victory. See, living in a place of victory involves your life. I remember several years ago, my wife and I and family were going to go to Orlando, Florida. And, and so we got on Highway 75. We had our van all packed up, loaded down. On a trip, going to go to Atlanta, Florida. Not Atlanta. We leave in Atlanta. We're going to Florida. And, and I didn't get, to, I got on the interstate. I didn't get two miles down. And I said, honey, I don't feel right about this. And I told her, I said, I, 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 I don't feel like we need to go. And, and, and there's a vacation. What can we do? I said, well, let's just do something right now. Let's, let's go ahead and turn around and go to Six Flags over Georgia. We just do that. So we did that. Well, we went to Six Flags over Georgia. And I wonder why, but we went. We was there about half an hour. All at once we get this phone call from Oklahoma. And saying that her dad passed away. My father passed away. We knew that he has been sick, but he passed away. See, God knew that. And, and so the Bible said, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And to me, that's a place of victory, to walk in faith. It's a place of victory. What do you mean faith is a place of victory? Well, I had faith, what was on, inside of me, I had faith in that, that I need to obey that and not go down there. And sure enough, when we got that phone call, on one hand it was an it evil report, bad report, but on the other hand, for us it was a place of victory because God let us know ahead of time. See, faith is a place, everything you do in word and deed, the Bible says you do it in faith. We live by faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. Why? Because it's a place of victory. The place of victory is faith. You, you can believe that you receive, and you can say to the mountain, the place of victory. I remember many years ago when my dad was living, he passed away on May the 4th, 1964. But when he was living, he developed a, uh, an arthritis in his Right, his whole right shoulder, he couldn't, uh, I remember my mother had to actually put the, pick the coat up so he can put his arm in the coat. He couldn't put his own coat on. And, and he had, that arthritis begun and his arm went into his shoulder. And of course later on, later on he got healed. And then years ago, even while here being a pastor, I've been 15 years ago, I began to have a little pain in my in my left elbow. And I just kind of ignored it. See, you never ignore things like that, but I did. I ignored it for a while. It got to the place that if I put my elbow on something, ooh, it would hurt. And then the devil began to talk to me. How do you know? You know when the devil talks to you. The devil said, do you remember when your dad had arthritis? It begun in his elbow. He moved up his arm to his shoulder. You remember that? Of course, my dad got healed after that. My God, let me finish the story. My dad did, did get healed. And, and I, I remember that was the devil. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm not going to get arthritis. And I remember getting to my car. I didn't want to holler out loud in the house and wake everybody up. So I got in the car. And I started driving. And, and you know, sometimes you've got to get mad at the devil. I mean, mad at the devil. Don't get mad at people, but get mad at the devil. And I just, in my car, I just screamed out loud. I said, in the name of Jesus, devil, I come against you in the name of Jesus. I remember I just very quickly, I took my right hand and I slammed my elbow. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command arthritis to come out of my body, come out of my elbow, in the name of Jesus. You know what happened when I done that? It hurt. <laughs> it hurt even worse. 
Oh, my goodness, I just stirred that up. Oh, man, my goodness, you talking about pain? And, of course, when I got to the office, it was kind of, I was on my way to the office to kind of settle down a little bit. But you know what? I went through that for a while. It wasn't a few days later. The pain that I had left me. That's been years ago. Never came back. It's not coming back. What was it? The devil was trying to put that same thing that was on my dad, put it on me. But the difference is my dad didn't use faith against it, but I did. And I spoke it and thank God. To me, that was a place of victory. When you have no arthritis, you live in a place of victory. But even though I spoke it and didn't live at that time, I was fully persuaded. Abraham was fully persuaded what God has promised. He's able to perform it. The word fully also means Abraham was free from the fear of contradiction. Even though everything was contradiction, what I said. As far as I'm concerned, I spoke to it. I said, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my body. Arthritis, call up my name. Arthritis, there's a name over you. I bind you and I command you to take your hands off my elbow. Take your hands off my body. Many times different things come on my body and I, got, I took care of it. How? With the words of faith. We overcome by the blood and by the words of our testimony. A place of victory. Faith is a place of victory. You can believe that you receive. You can speak to a mountain. You can confess the word of God. We talk more about confession of the word of God. He sent his word and healed me. And so thank God. Thank God. That's why the doctor told me a year and a half ago when I had a, 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 just a checkup. She said, you have a health of a 30-year-old. Well, she don't know the times I had to tell my body to line up. And my body lined up, and, and my body is renewed, the Bible says. And, and so you can keep your body healthy if you, get the right, if you speak the right language. If we speak the right language, our body. I always say this, uh, uh, with long life, will he satisfy me? I'm going to live a long, time, a long time on this earth. You may say, well, aren't, you, aren't you afraid the devil will hear you? Well, that's the dude I want to hear me. Because the devil's not in charge of my body, I am. The devil's not in charge of your body. The only way the devil can take charge of your body, if you let him. How do you let him? But God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If I was you, I would seek out those that's teaching faith. Thank God. Teach out those that's teaching faith. There's men, men of God out there that praise God are teaching words of faith. And, and find those that's teaching faith. And that's what I love doing. I love to teach them faith. But there's men out there. But if, you, if you're around someone that's not teaching faith, get out. Go to some place that's teaching faith. So faith is so important. If you're going to live in victory, you've got to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. You know, we need to observe that we are mountain mover. You can move mountains. You can move mountains. Well, a mountain could be a, a sickness. Uh, in, my, in that case, that mountain, that was a little, uh, in, my, in my elbow, it was arthritis, you know, but I tell you what, it was a little one, but it was going to be a, become a big one if I didn't deal with it. So I got killed, a, I killed that little baby. <laughs> I got it before it grows up and take over. And so therefore, it's all about faith. The Bible says, whatever you do in word and in deed, do it in faith. I go to bed by faith, I sleep by faith, I eat by faith, I live by faith, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sign. You don't say we fly by faith, we walk by faith. It's a daily walk, you walk by faith. And you, you wake up in the morning and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to be glad. Hey, that's victory. I'm speaking words of victory over my life, words of inspiration, Amen. So we need to observe that we have a mountain-moving faith. Amen. Another translation says, as I read it, I can guarantee you this truth. This is what will be done for someone who doesn't doubt, but believes what he says will happen. He can say to this mountain, be uprooted and thrown into the sea, and it will be done for him. What it means is a guarantee. Faith is guaranteed for success. Guaranteed means assurance, promise, can be trusted. You know, you can trust God. You know, Luke 17, 6, I, I quoted it, but let me read it. Luke 17, 6. And the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sacred mind tree, 
be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey him. Now you might say, well, now, everyone that has been born of God has the God kind of faith in their spirits. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You got faith. As we said last time, you got to get it developed. You might say, well, I've got uh, just a little, just a little faith. You just got a little faith. You can move mountains. Well, you say, I, I've got a little faith, but I'm not moving. I don't know. Well, you don't know how. People have faith, but they don't know how to use it. So that's what this is all about, this series on faith, a place of victory, to teach us how to use what we have inside of us, faith. Thank God we're alive today. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it works. Uh, one time a few years ago, I, I started having the symptoms of a, of a, a pain in my stomach, like a kidney stone, it just a, and, and it began to hurt. I, I said, no. I said, no. Well, what did I do? Well, we're going to go ahead and go to the doctor, have him check me out. That's what we're going to do. But I said, before I left, I said, in the name of Jesus, I will not. I command that kidney stone to dissolve. I command it to dissolve. No, in the name of Jesus, I take care of it right now in Jesus' name. By the time I got there, it was gone. That's been years ago. Because I believe I can have what I say. I'm not telling you a fairy tale. This is not make-believe. This faith stuff works. Faith works. I said faith works. We need to observe that we are mountain movers. There's other things I'm going to talk about. I won't have time. I guess there's a coming. <laughs> We're getting to part eight coming up. Because there's more stuff I want to say. I won't have time getting those things. But you do have mountain moving faith. It's amazing when you look back and where, when God taught you faith and, and, and He wants you to go teach others to have faith. I, I, I remember, and, and this, this bears uh, repeating, but I remember one day in the office that I, I went home and, and uh, I don't usually take naps when I get home from the office. I went home after lunch. But I felt that day I just need to lay down and take a little quick siesta. And, and so I laid down, and I mean, the minute I laid down, I was, it, 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 I don't know if it was a vision or dream, whatever it was, I don't get, all I know, I stood in the presence of Jesus in heaven. I didn't see heaven, because when you see Jesus, heaven don't matter. You just want to see the one that died for you. And I saw Jesus standing there with a white garment, and, and, uh, and uh, I, I, I ran to his feet, and, and, uh, and I put my arms around his ankles, began to weep because of my love for him. He said, stand up on your feet. And I stood up. He said, go back and teach my people faith. And I woke up, woke up. And I knew that's my mandate. And I found out to teach faith. I love to teach them faith. But I tell you what, every minister, not just me, but every minister is called by God to teach faith. Why? Because whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Faith for healing, faith to live a long time. It, it, that's why the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Why? A good fight of faith is a faith that you win. So we're teaching you how to win in life. Death and life is, is, is in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the direction of the tongue. You're going to have what you say. Teach my people faith. God doesn't only tell Brother Hagin to teach faith. Yes, thank God. He's telling other people to teach faith. So we are a word of faith church. Yes, I do believe in words that is spoken. I, I stay healthy, heal and hold because of faith. You know, just a grain of mustard seed, just if you have faith, just a little faith, you'll get, you'll get healed in your body. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are alive. Confession brings possession. Don't confess how bad it is. Confess on what God has done and what he will do for you. God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. If God says that he will supply you every need, then he will. I've got testimony after testimonies of how God healed my body of different things. And then I've got testimonies after testimonies of how God supernaturally supplied our need. 
supernaturally watched over us, supernaturally at the right place at the right time, God watches over his people. You are his people. Get a hold of faith. Don't judge people when they are speaking faith, when they're calling those things as being not of the word. Don't judge them. You don't understand. The Bible said that you are being destroyed by lack of knowledge. But I tell you what, God has blessed my wife and I. He's blessed us because not because we're special. But if you think about it, all of us are special. You're special. I'm no more special than you are. I remember when I was a young man, been years ago, when I started pastoring in 1979, when I started pastoring, my dad, when he was living, he told me, he said, Son, of all the sons I had, I thought you'd be the last one to be a preacher. <laughs> but I tell you what, well, okay, thanks, Pops. Thank you. I know he had no confidence in me. But as I began to minister, as I began to pastor, then he changed his tune because he knew something was different. See, my dad was called to be a, a minister of the gospel when he was young. And matter of fact, when he was a teenager, the Lord told him, prepare, I want you to preach the night on a message called the grace of God. My dad went to church that night and the pastor before he preached, he said, you know what? I don't have the message that the night, but Grady, his name's Grady, why don't you come preach? What did my dad do? He chickened out. He said, I don't have a message. So he, he disobeyed God, didn't have a message. And the pastor said, well, uh, so I don't have the message. Hey, brother, so, so, won't you come and, and, and preach for me tonight? Well, the guy went up there and preached. And the title of the guy's message was the grace of God. The same exact title. One obeyed, one didn't. I believe the mantle was on my dad to preach the gospel. He passed away early in life. He never entered into his first and last phase of his ministry. But that mantle fell on me. Thank God I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I'm going to preach on faith, how faith works. So glory be to God, I thank you for being with us in this message. And, and tune in next time because there's some more things I want to talk about about faith, to let you know that faith works. Learn about faith. Go to livingwordchurch.faith. I like the title, livingwordchurch.faith. Check us out on our webpage. Check us out. I, I believe once you, uh, if you don't have a home church, come see us. But anyway, God bless you. We love you. You're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. It cannot and will not be defeated. Whom God leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he provides. And he's given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You are a success going someplace to manifest. Health and healing is in your mouth. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.